Hi, welcome back to the Be Quiet Suite at Computex 2012. I'm back here with Aaron, but this time we're talking about coolers. Right. Now, you guys are pretty cool on coolers, if you excuse the pun. You've got two large ones in front of you. That's right, too, yeah. We have the uh, Dark Rock Pro 2, this is this one, and we have the Dark Rock 2, which is like the smaller brother. You can actually see that quite good if I just turn them around, and you will see that the Dark Rock Pro 2 is like two times the Dark Rock 2. Um, the Dark Rock Pro 2 contains a uh, 135mm side wings fan, uh, again with this rubber coating, you know, to reduce vibration, uh, same as in the power supplies. Uh, in the middle there is a 120mm fan. Um, what we did too is we changed the mounting system. This was a specific request by users and customers, actually. Uh, of course, at the same time, it's LGA 2011 uh, compatible. Um, I don't know, do you say that in English, compatible? Yeah. yeah, that's fine, that's okay. fine. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, so these are the two coolers. This is a smaller brother. It's around about 15 euros difference in the price. Um, actually, we could do a small shout out in your forums. People could, you know, like post if they want to review the small brother and we can toss two or uh, three samples of this and you pick the guys to review them. I'm sure we can sort it yeah. out. If you, have, uh, if you would like to review them, don't just post it in the comments of the video. Right, but I want a few more details yeah, on these sure. coolers go ahead, first. Go ahead, go ahead. You're getting ahead of yourself. Sure, sure. Um, with Ivy Bridge coming out yeah. a couple of months ago, um, everyone thought the move to lower power would perhaps nullify the need for huge coolers. But it's been quite the opposite, because if you want to overclock Ivy Bridge, you put some voltage through it at 4.6 gig, and it runs really, really hot. Mm -hmm. Now, in a strange or good way, is that a good thing for you guys with coolers like this? Uh, well, that, that's that's a good question, actually. It uh, depends. Of course, we have this huge model, uh, which is very good for overclocking uh, with the two fans. But, of course, you can regulate the fans. And uh, if you have this much of cooling material, which is almost one kilogram, uh, and you reduce the fans to, like, 1,000 or less RPMs, you can, of course, also uh, build a very, very silent system, uh, which can run a processor or a CPU, which is not overclocked. So if you overclock it, you use the full setup. And if you not overclock it and it doesn't generate that much wattage you can just you know regulate the fans and have a really really unhearable system right have you seen an uptick in um, sales just because of ivy bridge and just because of the the heat issues i've mentioned uh, what so the heat issues with ivy bridge once yeah. you overclock it yeah, yeah. have you seen an uptick in sales of coolers for that reason well, um, I'm pretty sure that, you know, coming up with new CPU system, the sales uh, figures of the coolers will increase too again. Sure, of course, yeah. yeah. And moving forwards, with this being pretty chunky, is there a need to have water cooling? Or do you think it's, it's good enough for pretty much most mainstream systems? Well, it depends, again, on what you want to do. Of course, if you're thinking of these, you know, complete water cooling setups where everything is integrated in one system, so you only need to plug it in, which is easy to use for the customer. I mean, I wouldn't even call it the old-fashioned water cooling system because it's, you know, comparable to a cooler because you just mount it and it's in there. Um, but the real old-fashioned uh, water cooling system with the radiator mounted wherever you want it and maybe 320 millimeter fans on it and whatever and one special pump and the reservoir lighted up somewhere external, I think these are two, ex you know, two different cooling categories you have to look at. Okay. This is air cooling, the other one is water cooling setup for real enthusiasts generating much more power maybe with their systems integrating the graphic cards and the loop and the North Bridge and whatever they do and some do the hard drive. So that's, I think, a different topic. I would even go so far and take this, you know, complete water cooling setups uh, and put them into this category because yeah, you, know, you just mount them and use them. And they have round about the same, the same uh, TDP figures. Right, you guys are pretty serious in cooling by all accounts. Uh, what can we expect again? Typical question, next few months, what innovations can there be or do you have in mind that you can talk about just a little bit with our viewers? Yes, and uh, again, like as uh, the situation is with the power supplies, you can compare it with the graphic cards. This is a very hard market, a hard fight. I think also for your, for your editors, it's really difficult to measure the difference between the coolers, right? It's really close by if you take the top, top line of the coolers. So, of course, it's going to be a fight to make more improvements. I think uh, uh, very, very interesting is where you want to focus. You want to focus on silence or performance. That means, you know, the, the, the space between the cooling uh, fans and stuff. So you can work on very different setups. Uh, we did a lot of uh, simulations, for example, for uh, the heat pipes where they're situated. So you can always, you know, like, it's like, you know, trying something new out to get some better results. But uh, maybe we're going to do something totally different. But um, yeah, let's just watch out the next month. And does it make sense also for Be Quiet, being a premium brand, to have cheaper coolers, much cheaper? Um, 
we actually do already offer a mid-range series uh, just to you know work out in this uh, you know middle price segments because these are at uh, around 50 euros mm -hmm. um, so you need to offer something for the other customers who want a normal fan maybe but with a good uh, fan on it with a sun and wings on it uh, which is a shadow uh, rock series we have a we have a top fall cooler in the series program so we have uh, the Shadow Rock do Top Flow and uh, two other models, uh, which, by the way, we can send to you guys too for a yeah. test. Yeah. And just going back to that, I'm talking more about the 10 euro coolers. Oh, so, the ones. yeah, so basically, you've got your reference heatsink, it's not good enough. You perhaps don't want to or can't mm -hmm. spend the 40 or even $25. Is that a market you'd be interested in? Um, at the moment, I would say no, because uh, when I'm just thinking of the you know, box Intel coolers, which got really good, um, I think there's not so much need on it. Okay, and uh, the same question as last time. Sell your coolers in one paragraph to our cameraman over there. Okay, good. Okay, this one I try better without stumbling over it. Um, with the Darkrock Pro 2, you get one of the most silent coolers uh, with a company selling both the cooler design and the fan design out of one hand. So uh, you can be pretty sure that you get a high quality, really silent fan with a, I would claim, unique design if you mount it in your case. Right, Aaron, thanks very much. You, We're going to put these coolers to the test. you probably see the review. Actually, you will in later June, so do stay tuned for that.